the history of warfare, the cover of darkness has provided a tactical advantage to one or another of the opposing forces. In their quest for a physical and psychological edge over their foes, military leaders since time immemorial have sought artificial means of penetrating the darkness and turning night into day. Torches and flares provided early means of battlefield illumination, but their usefulness was limited. They often shed as much light on friend as on foe and always created logistic problems. Then came the searchlights. Searchlights have a distinct advantage over flares. Their light can be turned on and off at will and controlled in duration and effect. But there was still a drawback. Searchlight illumination spilled over friendly forces and the large, brightly lit device became an inviting target for enemy fire. The first real breakthrough in modern military night vision came in the 1930s as a result of early research in television and the development of an image tube that could be used to convert infrared images into visible displays. Recognizing the military significance of this invention, the Army began pursuing its own infrared research. The effort resulted in the familiar sniper scope of World War II. In today's terms, the sniper scope is a rather primitive night vision device, but its popularity helped pave the way for the more sophisticated near-infrared systems of the future. This device presented a serious handicap in combat. It was an active system, one that could be spotted by an enemy equipped with an infrared sensor of his own. It required heavy batteries for the light and could see only where the light was pointing. It wasn't until the mid-1950s that Army night vision experts were successful in developing light amplifying tubes which did not require the cumbersome and power consuming infrared light source. Finally, they were nearing the goal of providing the GI with the ability to fight effectively at night with equipment virtually undetectable by the enemy. Spurred by priority directives from the White House, night vision research went into high gear in the early 1960s and has been kept at an intensive pace ever since. The nerve center of the Army's night vision research and development effort is the night vision laboratory, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. The laboratory is part of the U.S. Army Electronics Command, which is a major subordinate command of the Army Materiel Command. Here in the last decade, significant strides have been made in three major branches of night vision technology, image intensifiers, thermal imaging devices, and infrared searchlights. Image intensifiers amplify available night light the dim glow of the moon and the stars, even the faint radiation of the polar aurora and the sky glow of the upper atmosphere. At the heart of the system is the image intensification tube, the first generation of which was developed around 1960. This is how it works. What little light there is from the night sky hits the end of the tube, where a faint image is trapped by a window made of glass fibers. Entering the tube, the light strikes a photoemissive, that is, a light-sensitive surface, causing the tube to discharge an electron image within the tube into a vacuum. Energized by 15,000 volts of electricity, the electrons strike a screen similar to a TV picture tube, producing a picture many times brighter than the original scene. The energizing process is repeated twice more in the first generation of image intensifier tubes, a system made up of three tubes clamped together into one gathering energy as it passes through three screens. The original image is 40,000 times brighter by the time it reaches the eyepiece. The family of night vision devices utilizing the first generation image intensifier tube, which needs no light source, scored a tremendous success in Vietnam, where it was put to the test in conditions of night combat. The smallest and lightest member of the first generation image intensification family is this four-power small starlight scope mounted on a rifle or a machine gun. 
This item provides the individual soldier excellent passive sighting and accurate aiming and firing of targets up to 500 meters away in conditions of near total darkness. In addition to its use as a weapon sight, the small starlight scope has also proven quite useful as a handheld observation viewer for command and control operations, physical security, and general surveillance. A larger member of the image intensifier family, first generation, which gained much favor in Vietnam, is the crew served weapon sight. Mounted on a machine gun or similar weapons, this seven power sight permits the delivery of accurately aimed fire during darkness at targets more than a thousand meters away. When mounted on a tripod, the crew served weapon sight can also double as a commander's observation device. An image intensifier specifically designed for passive surveillance is the seven power night observation device medium range. Utilizing a scaled up version of the first generation image intensifier tube, this tripod mounted device enables commanders, artillery observers and forward observers to locate and identify enemy elements thousands of meters away. These and other first generation image intensifiers accomplished two important objectives in the late 1960s and early 1970s. They satisfied an urgent need on the battlefields of Southeast Asia, and they dramatically proved the feasibility and effectiveness of passive night vision. But they had their drawbacks. They were too costly for broad army issue and too heavy and cumbersome for some applications, especially when used as sights for handheld weapons. Shortcomings of the first generation tube at the upper left were largely surmounted with the recent introduction of these two second generation image intensifier tubes. Not only are they lighter and cheaper, but in several respects superior to their first generation predecessors. Unlike the first generation tube, which depended for its performance on a complex three-stage amplification mechanism, the second generation tube is a single stage image intensifier. This is how it works. As with the first generation, the faint input image strikes a photoemissive surface, discharging electrons into a vacuum. But instead of the three screens needed to amplify an image, as in the first generation, a single microchannel plate is incorporated into the second generation tube. For each electron entering the perforated glass plate, as many as 10,000 electrons are discharged. The intensified electron image thus created results in an extremely bright picture as it is focused on the phosphor screen at the viewing end of the tube. The development of the second generation image intensifier tube signified a major advance in the Army's night vision technology. Costs were reduced, increasing the potential of broad Army issue. As for the tube's performance, it is not only one-fourth the size and one-half the weight of its predecessor, but it is a much finer optical instrument, capable of registering an image of sharper resolution and lesser distortion. The reduction in tube weight and size is the key to the realization of a long-standing Army goal. It heralded the birth of a whole new family of image intensifier devices, smaller, lighter, cheaper, yet more effective and reliable. The family's firstborn, was this second generation small starlight scope. Compact and easy to handle, it quickly proved to be a more efficient, more sensitive night weapon sight. In addition, it nearly eliminates a problem inherent in the first generation device, the momentary blinding of the user by light emitted from tracer bullets. The reduction in size and weight is even more significant in the second generation crew served weapon sight. Another item that stood to benefit greatly by the second generation tube is the multipurpose night vision goggles. 
The head-mounted goggles were designed to give the individual soldier around-the-clock mobility, a capability of performing a variety of combat and support tasks during darkness. The goggles are ideally suited for night driving. They permit the driver a field of view of 40 degrees and a visibility of up to 100 meters in moonlight and 50 meters in starlight at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour without interfering at all with his driving. The goggles have proven highly useful for the performance of light maintenance in conditions of darkness. Here, the driver is checking for carburetor problems. The night vision goggles are also quite effective in actual combat. In addition to such basic uses as patrol and command missions, the goggles are envisioned to be of great value in the performance of a variety of other nighttime tasks, including air rescue and medical aid. A monocular version of the goggles is the handheld pocket scope. Unity power and three power units have been fabricated. It is designed to be used as a personal night viewer for patrol, local surveillance, weapon fire adjustment, and general orientation in darkness. The pocket scope can also be employed to detect enemy use of infrared lights. The lightest in the image intensifier family, the pocket scope weighs one and a half pounds. It offers a field of view of 15 degrees and produces a clear image at a range of 375 meters in moonlight and 200 meters in starlight. Combat vehicle sites such as this image intensifier called driver's viewer are also being developed. This is what the tank driver sees through the driver's viewer at night. The newest, most sophisticated, and most promising of the Army's night vision systems is the thermal imaging family, which uses a different technique than the image intensifiers just shown. Thermal imagers don't see light. They see temperature differences between targets and their backgrounds. The first born in the family is the handheld thermal viewer. Intended to be used primarily by infantry patrols for ambush detection, it weighs less than six pounds with five additional pounds of battery worn on the belt. It is a portable passive system designed to detect and recognize personnel and vehicle targets in complete darkness without even the benefit of moon or stars. Remember, thermal imaging is a far infrared technique which takes advantage of differences in temperature between objects and their background. One can see this tank because of the thermal radiation, the heat emitted. In simplified terms, this is how a thermal image is obtained. The infrared radiation of this tank is collected by the optical system and focused on an oscillating mirror, which in turn bounces the signal onto a detector array comprised of numerous tiny sensors. After the sensor signal is amplified, the electronic picture is picked up as an image by the display array. The observer perceives a visible image by viewing the picture display reflected from the back of the same mirror. An important feature of thermal imaging is the capability of the system to deliver an image even through dust and haze or behind foliage. These swimmers are frustrated in their effort to hide behind tall grass at night. The heat radiated from their bodies is a dead giveaway readily picked up by the temperature sensitive detectors of a thermal imaging device. The potential of thermal imaging is virtually unlimited. The handheld thermal viewer is now being used by Bureau of Mine Safety Inspectors to detect loose, potentially hazardous cracks in mine walls. The bright area is loose rock that could fall. 
Thermal imaging will add a new punch to the Dragon missile system, providing it with the capability to operate at night and in adverse visibility conditions. Since a thermal picture is formed by sensing radiation, not by seeing light, this sighting device incidentally helped eliminate a problem long inherent in the Dragon and other missile launchers, the momentary blinding of the gunner by the bright flash emitted from the guidance system. The Dragon thermal sight weighs 10 pounds and magnifies images four times. A similar sighting device has been designed for the TOW missile system. Other vehicular thermal viewing devices are being developed for a variety of combat vehicles. They are designed to provide tanks with primary surveillance and fire control at night or during poor visibility conditions. Since thermal imaging devices can see through smoke, these new combat vehicle night sights will provide tank gunners with faster delivery of fire. Thermal imaging systems are being incorporated into aircraft as demonstrated by this night aerial view of a busy highway through FLIR, the forward-looking infrared system. The Army has chosen the Huey helicopter to test FLIR's capability for surveillance, target acquisition, fire control, and limited navigation during all hours and through all visibility conditions. Pilot, co-pilot, and gunner receive the picture information from the detector array located on the helicopter's nose on TV-like screens. The system's nighttime surveillance capability is dramatically demonstrated by these night scenes of familiar landmarks of the nation's capital. The system works best at night when warm bodies stand out more clearly against the cooler ambient temperature. But it is also quite effective in daylight when it may be used to spot camouflaged vehicles or weapons. Note the ability of the system to determine the amount of fuel in these storage tanks. The FLIR sees the temperature difference between the fuel and the metal tanks. Significant strides have been made by the U.S. Armed Forces in FLIR technology in the wake of the Army's successful launching of the system in Vietnam, where it was instrumental in detecting movement of supplies down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The Army, the Navy, and the Air Force have been coordinating their FLIR effort with an eye to saving through standardization. All three services have been installing standard far-infrared imaging sensors into a variety of attack and surveillance aircraft, as well as ground and shipboard air defense systems and remotely piloted vehicles. The impact of the Army's night vision technology has already reached beyond the armed services and into the civilian community. The non-military applications have been many and varied and are expected to increase as the cost of the items declines. The Army's image intensifier tubes are being used by the nation's astronomers to increase the light gathering power of huge telescopes. The small starlight scope has been loaned to scientists for such diverse studies as the migration routes of fish and the nocturnal habits of vampire bats and wild animals. A foundation for night blindness hopes to equip those so handicapped with image intensifiers for better orientation in the dark. Here is what a night blindness victim said of this device. People, to you, this may seem ugly. To me, it's beautiful. And the goggles may one day become standard equipment for use in conservation efforts, such as detecting forest fires in early stages. The potential of thermal imaging is even greater. The technique is already being used in breast cancer detection may one day become as indispensable a diagnostic tool as the X-ray. Its potential in law enforcement has been demonstrated in the Florida Everglades, where it was used in the apprehension of concealed alligator poachers.
clear type imagers have been used in satellites for surveys of the earth. The system holds great promise as a means of detecting crop diseases, as well as air and water pollution. The Army's powerful xenon searchlights with their long-range beams should prove extremely useful for law enforcement agencies in situations requiring the illumination of vast areas. This beam has a range of five kilometers. Even more powerful is the airborne xenon searchlight which was on hand during the Apollo 17 launch for possible rescue operations. Progress in the research and development of the Army's night vision technology has been rapid and promising. The infrared searchlights, the image intensifiers, and the thermal viewing devices now in production have given our forces eyes in the night. The future military and civilian potential of night vision techniques is limited only by man's imagination.